Good evening. It's 7 p.m. I am the Deputy Town Clerk, Margie Tachi. Before we get started, I have a few announcements. Tonight's regularly scheduled Herndon Town Council work session is a virtual meeting pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3708.2 as amended. The Governor's Executive Orders as amended and in accordance with Ordinance 20-0-2 three, continuity of governmental operations during pandemic disaster, COVID-19, as amended and readopted by the Herndon Town Council on September 8th, 2020, which supersedes previously adopted ordinances, or excuse me, amendments. Proper notice of the electronic meeting provided in accordance with the Virginia Code. Agenda meeting materials along with information for viewing the meeting and submitting comments for the record are available on the town's website. The meeting will begin with a roll call to determine a quorum and all votes, including adjournment, will be by roll call. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Margie. Um, I will call our October 6th Town Council work session to order and um, ask the clerk to please call the roll and ask my colleagues to state your name and um, that you are present when you're called upon. Town Manager. Ashton present. Town Attorney. Yates present. Olam. Present. Baker. Baker, present. Delagula. Delagula, present. DeCall. DeCall is present. Friedrichs. Friedrichs, present. McKenna. McKenna is present. Merkel. Uh, Merkel is present. So for the record, there is a quorum electronically, and uh, we can get right to it. Um, we'll start with comments from the town manager this evening. Do you have any comments on the, I guess, on the emergency or just in general? Yeah, this is Bill Ashton, Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just, a, just a few items. Uh, late last week, I sent to you, and I know Ann Curtis has now forwarded on to the General Herndon community, Halloween guidance uh, that is coming out of, actually out of the State Department of Health through the Fairfax County Department of Health. Um, I encourage um, all parents to, to go to our social media pages, uh, review that guidance um, to help you make your decisions on how you intend to celebrate Halloween. Um, other than that, just uh, the numbers continue to be um, in Northern Virginia continue to be doing fairly well. Um, it is uh, we are probably doing better than other parts of the state right now. The state numbers, the drivers are out of southwestern Virginia, which is um, actually interesting because that is much less densely populated than Northern Virginia, obviously. But uh, the things that we are doing seem to be having an effect. So as I often like to remind at times like this, please mask up, please wash your hands, stay home if you're sick and socially distance and stay six feet apart when you can possibly do so. Um, these things are working according to Dr. Gloria and as we see in the numbers, I think Northern Virginia has been much more observant of that than elsewhere. And uh, I, I really truly attribute um, what's been going on to our observance of those um, health guidelines. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, do, do any of my colleagues have questions for the town manager at this time? Anybody? Okay. Um, so seeing none, um, I will ask um, the town clerk if we have received any comments for the record or any transactional disclosure declarations from council on any of tonight's items. No, Madam Mayor, I have not received any comments for the record or any disclosures from council on any items listed on the agenda this evening. Okay, thank you so much. Um, there are no public hearings on the agenda this evening, so we'll move straight into general items. The first item is Ordinance 2055 to amend Chapter 10 Building and Building Regulations, Article 2 Standard, Sections 10 through 21, which is Adoption of Statewide Building Code, to update language to accommodate adoption of future additions. And I'll recognize the town attorney for our staff report, Ms. Yates. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this particular amendment is in the form of a housekeeping amendment updating. Um, the Commonwealth of Virginia many decades ago adopted 
the uh, uniform statewide built what is known as the uniform statewide building code which is essentially a nationwide code um, this adoption of the amendment or in our incorporation into the town code has been in this uh, section 10-21 for many years however at the time it was adopted, it stated a edition of the code, 2009, I believe, that has long since been replaced by several other editions. Uh, the Code of Virginia allows localities to adopt the current edition of the code and any subsequent amendments. So I believe that the language that is before you this evening for adoption next week um, clarifies that it is the current edition without stating a year and any future additions. Um, as well as uh, we specify in the language that's before you, um, that a copy of the uniform, uniform statewide building code is available in the office of the building official, which is on the second floor of the uh, Herndon Municipal Center. Um, and John Orison is our building official. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Are there any questions for the town attorney on this item? Ms. Friedrichs. Quick one. Um, do we also have this online, this, uh, the um, copy of the most recent uh, version? I believe we do, but that is also anticipated if we don't. I do believe there's a link. I will check while we're um, conducting the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Speaking. So, Madam Town Attorney, does this mean should the General Assembly make another change in 2021, then we don't have to go back and rewrite everything? It, it's adopted. It's it's adopted in its entirety with this so then, amendment. This, mm -hmm. this language saves us a lot of staff time as well, because that means we're updated without having to go back and do all the... I okay. think it's, yes, I think yes. it's clear what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the town attorney on this item? Anybody? Okay. Um, so with concurrence of council, I ask that we, if we can put this on consent for next week. Is there any objection to that? All right. Oh, I love all the thumbs up. Okay. Um, next up is ordinance 20056 to amend chapter 66, which is street sidewalks and certain other public places. Article two street excavations to develop standards for utility distribution or transmission poles and to establish a maximum fee for administrative review eligible projects. And I believe our zoning administrator, David Stromberg, is here for the staff report. Hi, David. Yes, good evening, Mayor Merkel, members of council. I'm David Stromberg, the zoning administrator. Um, although I'm not in front of you for a zoning text amendment, I'm here for a town code amendment. Uh, if you'll all remember back in January of this year, uh, we did pass the zoning text amendment for the small cells um, that the General Assembly passed a few years ago, and the localities were required to go ahead and adopt ordinances for that. Um, the zoning amendment regulated small cells on private property, and we had mentioned then that if there would be a companion bill that would regulate small cell proposals on public property, so in the rights of way. Um, and so this is that companion bill. It was separated a bit again because of the pandemic. Um, it doesn't, the state didn't leave localities too much ability to regulate, but in the event, if we do uh, have to deny an application, this just gets that framework there in the town code if that's necessary. Um, and again, the town has received a number of applications already. Um, None of them have been approved yet, um, but again, we do have a number in right now. Uh, and the other thing is this does allow us to charge the $500 application fee, where under the current language in the ordinance, when these come in, um, the town is only getting about $150 uh, for the application fee. So still not covering staff time, but it is a bit of an improvement um, and the most that we're allowed to charge for an application under the state. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. What questions do we have for Mr. Stromberg? Anyone? 
Ms. Friedrichs? Does this supersede any regulation that we already have, or is this a completely new situation? We have some general submission requirements for right-of-way permits, but uh, there really wasn't too much in the town code, so this really lays everything out there. Um, there's a lot of new language in there for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on this item? Okay. Um, thank you. Next up is um, Ordinance 20057 to amend Chapter 26, um, Article 2, Section 26-24, which is tree, remo tree removal on private property to clarify town actions consistent with state code. And I'll recognize our town attorney for the staff report. Thank you again, Madam Mayor. Uh, this amendment is necessary again to clarify current language that was in our code in section 2624 and to provide uh, consistency with new language um, with the state code enabling law. This amendment clarifies that the town's authority on private property applies only when a dead tree or a distressed tree is uh, a um, constitutes a hazard to public public property um, life um, or hazard. Um, it clarifies the owner means the property owner. It clarifies um, that consistent with state law, the remedy that the town has in the event a property owner fails to remove the tree is to seek an injunction through the circuit court of Fairfax County ordering the removal of the tree on um, private property. Um, a violation of this section um, for failing to um, remove a tree is a misdemeanor punishable by a $250 fine, and that's pursuant to uh, Town Code Section 2626 and Section 114. It also clarif clarifies that a homeowner that has been uh, given a notice to remove or trim a diseased or dead tree um, has an appeal to the uh, town man to the town manager, not the town council. I'm sure you'd be happy about that. Um, but I think that uh, the amendments uh, just further clarify language that was already in the code. We did make a couple of deletion deletions of language that was inconsistent with state code regarding um, when we could go on people's property to remove trees. Um, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, what questions do we have? Um, got windows popped up everywhere. I can't see everybody. Okay, what questions do we have? Uh, Mr. DeCall. I think you're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Council member to call. I'm sorry, this is council member Dakal. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Okay, um, Madam Attorney, there was a question by a resident, if you remember, uh, maybe a month back, couple of months back, asking to remove a tree within a private property. And if I remember correctly, because of the code, we were not able to uh, execute that request. So with this, with the adoption of this ordinance, will we be able to take care of those requests now going forward? I just wanted to understand how, um, you know, where we stand with the adoption of this uh, ordinance. If you remember that, you know, couple I, of emails I we received, yeah. I do. <laughs> remember that situation and it prompted my review of this very code section and uh, which resulted in the discovery of the language which was not consistent with state code enabling authority. The homeowner was asking us to remove a tree that they felt a, a tree that was contained on private property that was not a public hazard or danger um, to life publicly and uh, we could not go on private property to remove a tree uh, pursuant to state law that d is not constituting a public danger or hazard. What this language does is clar clarifies so that citizens are not asking us to come on their property and remove the neighbor's tree that they believe is causing a problem on their property. 
what this allows us to do um, and all has on what state law allows us to do is go on um, is uh, serve notices on property owners whose trees are creating public hazards or um, to either property or life. Um, so I think it would have um, this this would help clarify for that particular homeowner that we cannot do what they were asking us to do. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for the town attorney on this item? Anybody? Um, Mr. Delagula, followed by Ms. Friedrichs. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. This is Councilmember Delagula. I know it's redundant, um, but just got asked if the town manager agreed to take on this burden. I believe that's a question for me, Madam Mayor. Um, <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> I, it, it's part of the job is how I would characterize it. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. All good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Friedrichs. I, I know what I'm saying is going to sound pretty redundant as well, but I just want to clarify because I think uh, the town attorney's uh, uh, very formal language is sometimes a little uh, difficult. Um, so what we're saying is, we had something in the code that we're technically not allowed to do, so we're moving it from the code so nobody thinks we're gonna do it. So, so nobody it, thinks that we can do it. Yes, we're clarifying that. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, any other questions for the town attorney? Okay, thank you very much. And Okay, so our next item is resolution 20 G 46 to ratify an extension of lease pursuant to ordinance 20 O 23 continuity of government operations as amended between the town and Eldon street players and I'll recognize Lisa Yates once again for the staff report. Thank you. Um, Eldon street players, uh, otherwise known as next stop uh, currently leases 1275 square feet of space for rehearsal purposes in the building that the town owns at 397 Herndon Parkway. Um, consistent with other town leases of town space, uh, similar leases of town space, um, the rent is a dollar per lease term, which is per year. Um, the current lease that Next Stop has for this property for rehearsal will expire our, on October 14th. Um, this extension of lease extends the current lease for one year uh, under the same terms so that it will expire next year on October 14th. The town manager uh, pursuant to his continuity of government um, powers has signed this lease and uh, we're asking next week that town council uh, consider ratification of the extension of lease for the one year pursuant to the existing terms. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you very much. And finally, we um, have another um, resolution 20 G 47 to ratify an extension of the lease um, pursuant to our COG ordinance as amended between the town and the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. And this is Lisa Yates once again. Thank you. Uh, this lease is for uh, Supervisor Faust's space um, over at the, the same building, 397. Um, he leases, or the Board of Supervisors for him, leases uh, office space over there. Um, again, consistent with uh, similar types of leases, uh, the rent for the space is $1 per year. The current lease uh, here will expire on November 11th of this year. Um, this extension of lease extends the current lease again for one more year into November 11th, 2021. Uh, pursuant to the continuity of government powers extended to the um, town manager, he signed this extension of lease and we are asking that the council consider ratification of the lease extending um, this term uh, another year through November 11th of 2021. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions on this item? Okay. Uh, thank you. And if it's um, if there's concurrence of council, I'd like to put these two leases on consent for next week. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That brings us to roundtable. Who would like to start us off? 
Anybody? Uh, Pradeep. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just wanted to bring some concerns of public interest. I was uh, knocking a few doors, talking to the residents, and uh, you know, I just wanted to bring that to the council as well as to the staff that the parking issue in the town has become uh, more difficult than before um, because we, uh, wherever I went, I saw a lot of cars, especially uh, construction vehicles parked on the street. And, um, you know, um, a lot of residents had concern over, over that. And also what we found is many of those, not all of those, again, many of those are actually parked there and people go to some other jurisdiction and then come back on Monday, park their vehicle, private vehicle there and take those, uh, you know, construction vehicles from there. So it, it has been a routine. And uh, on top of that, there is a lot of, um, you know, uh, littering issue as well, beer bottles and all those things, you know, on the corner where it is hidden by the car. Uh, people are, you know, doing that. And um, I have seen that in quite a places and wanted to bring this question here because what can we do? to make sure, uh, you know, obviously we want to make sure our residents have enough parking space there, but at the same time, we don't want uh, people to park their construction vehicles here and then go to some other places and then come back again and then, you know, uh, do the rituals. So uh, how can we differentiate, uh, you know, maybe we can think of a uh, process to differentiate, this is the residence car, this is non-residence car, um, you know, so I think that issue is becoming uh, bigger and bigger every year. And I think uh, we have to start um, analyzing the issue and coming up with the right solution. So obviously residents uh, do not feel that their parking space is take taken away. And at the same time, uh, you know, people do not abuse uh, the parking spaces we have in the town of Herndon. So this is something I wanted to throw out here for discussion and also, you know, for uh, how, how the council feels about that and also, you know, how uh, uh, maybe uh, for the staff also to to do some more analysis on that one. That's uh, that's that's one of the issue I wanted to bring it. And also another thing is, uh, um, you know, I have seen a lot of local jurisdiction now going like using their social media channel. Uh, through their town or city channel and going, uh, you know, live stream for their public hearing as well as work session. Uh, and I think this is something we can also consider or discuss about because uh, we want more public input, more engagement. Obviously, there are pros and cons in using social media. Uh, we, we can certainly, you know, find out what is the best way to go. But I think for more public engagement on top of TV, which is already there, I think this is time to think about. Obviously, there are some legal perspective, compliance perspective, logistic perspective we have to think about. But I think uh, my um, ask here is obviously you know it's it's uh, how the council decides but i think we have to start using our social media channel the town's official social media channel to start uh you know live streaming our work session and public hearing so people actually participate more and understand the process uh, you know how we what this is not just what decision we make, but how we actually reach to that decision. They can they can see how actually the sauce, sauces is cooked here. So uh, those two things I wanted to bring into uh, council's uh, um, you know um, notice. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you for bringing that forward. Um, I think probably both of those things need staff to give some attention to before we have a real robust discussion, but if there's anything that anybody wants to chime in about, we would welcome that. Uh, Mr. McKenna. Yeah, just uh, real quick. Um, we had, When I was on council 20 years ago, my mile square town was split in half by a railroad. And, um, I think not just maybe the communities that we have, but with the Metro coming, um, one of the things that to worry about, you know, over Missouri Avenue, one of the things that we did to mitigate the parking because people weren't paying for parking going into New York was to give parking passes to areas of places for specifically residents 
and if they weren't there, they were, you know, they would get tickets and, um, but, you know, the residents would have parking passes. They actually were, um, you know, railroad themed, so they would go on the mirrors. That might be something to consider as well, um, you know, because I do know when the Metro does come, you know, Missouri Avenue, some other places might have some parking issues. And um, I think people try and park close there. Um, so this might be a great way to kind of do a beta project, um, you know, in regards to something. I mean, obviously this has to be vetted by, uh, by staff, but this is something I went through uh, 19 years ago and it was pretty successful. Yeah, um, I think we have a couple of mechanisms that we might be able to um, to employ. We just need to look into the issues a little more deeply and especially if Metro ever does open, got my fingers crossed, we'll have to solve that problem. Thank you. Signe, were you responding to Pradeep or were you ready for roundtable? Uh, I was responding to Pradeep. Um, mm -hmm. As far as the parking is concerned, I mean, what he has raised is something that people have been raising ever since I've been on council and long before it, and I've accidentally set off a tsunami of of recrimination myself by mentioning it <laughs> periodically. Um, but uh, as far as um, uh, Bill's suggestion, Bill McKenna's suggestion is concerned, could we, um, we, we got rid of the Herndon sticker uh, to, for the purpose of uh, making collection of, prop, of um, vehicle taxes easier. Um, but uh, as soon as we did that, everybody said, oh, it's great that we don't have vehicle you know that, that we don't have to to get those stickers but um i, I think now people are seeing the downside um so i i like his, uh, i like uh bill's thought on that matter um but i wonder if uh, i'm pretty sure there are some legal reasons why our streets are not exclusively ours um or are they i don't know so i i definitely see that the town would need to um that, that um perhaps the town attorney would need to address the question of what exactly kinds of parking restrictions can we put for Herndon residents versus other Northern Virginia or Fairfax County residents. And then, um, you know, the, we run into the, the issue of, should we just have two spaces per, per resident um, uh, or something like that? Uh, because when we had to restrict parking um, over an old hunt way, we ran into a lot of legal issues so uh not bad just you know a lot of regulations that we had to think about so um i i understand what you're saying um uh, mr decal and, and but i've run into it a bunch of times myself and we've never um, um we haven't made a, a definitive decision and I, I i do think this is um becoming more and more important thanks uh mr town oh wait mr town manager Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor, Bill Ashton, Town Manager. Just to add a finer point on this discussion, uh, there are a couple issues raised. The first one, Mr. DeCall raised regarding uh, the construction of vehicles and various other things. We were looking at that pre-COVID. We had the Herndon Police working with Lisa Yates, our town attorney, to look at ways in which we could try to address some of those issues, and then COVID hit. And we that kind of got shelved for a little bit. Uh, we will be bringing it back. It's something that we have started looking at. It's something that I, I often say that if the parking problems in town magically went away tomorrow, you probably wouldn't need a town manager anymore. Uh, so I hear about this. I hear about it as well as you all. Um, so we are sensitive to that. We are going to work on that. Now, item number two is the metro. If you recall, when we we revamped, we totally re-engineered the residential parking permit program for Old Hunt Way regarding the high school problem. But my mind's eye was always on metro. We were doing it for there initially, but we wanted to establish a system that's flexible enough for us to overlay on Missouri. And I would venture to say, unfortunately, even in my neighborhood, um, uh, two blocks from here, where there's a pathway back into the current TRG, which then crosses the street into Metro. Um, I have some of my neighbors will be affected here shortly. So when we were designing that system, it was to be for us to lay additional zones for Metro. And uh, regarding the sticker, and I think there's a question raised about, you know, can we use the sticker to restrict parking? Um, yes, the streets are ours. They're, the town maintains them. We own them. However, under state code, they are public streets. And we cannot delineate to that level that town residents can park here versus there. We get a little bit more latitude in state code when it comes to things that like residential parking permit programs. 
where you have a, a massive problem like that. But just on your average street, we there we're limited in what we can do there. Um, so I just wanted to clarify those couple points. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, um, Cesar. Are you ready for your roundtable or chiming in? Uh, no, Madam Mayor. I was going to chime in on okay. Mr. DeCall's comments. Go ahead, uh, uh, Councilmember Delago. Appreciated that. Uh, so brought up a couple things there, and I, I got to tell you, I've heard some of the same things. Um, first of all, I, I want to start with the higher level one. I think the transparency issue. I think people have enjoyed the work sessions. Um, they're available right now online. People can see and hear. Uh, but if we ever go back or if we ever go away from this virtual setting, people do want to see who's making the comments, the discussions going on. I mean, we may not think people want to see it, but they actually do. People do care about how we come to these decisions. And I got to tell you, it's, it's, it has been this little bit of, you know, you're not transparent enough, you know, what are you hiding? We're not hiding anything, right? So I just think we, you know, it's probably for a later time or the next council, but I'm gonna support we continue this, either publicizing the, the audios and videos and let them see who's making the comments and allow those transcripts to be available. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is I hear the parking thing all the time. That's just sort of a, a reflection of where the town is going. I had, I had my HOA try to tell me I couldn't park my vehicles on fortnightly. I mean, you think about that, right? I mean, it's getting to that level where some people think you can enforce parking on a public street. Now, if your car's got flat tires, if it's rusting and leaking oil, then that's a different issue. But Please don't make us go back to putting stickers on our cars. I, I don't. I don't particularly like that. I totally I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was happy when that thing went away. It was. I mean, if you want to have a little barcode, right? If you want to get really like creative and sort of tech savvy, make it kind of like you know a little bit inconspicuous, but something that's massive and says Herndon. I mean, that that's just. I don't think people want that. You kind of gave them the freedom from being away from those big stickers of the town. I think it'd be hard to go back to that. And regarding the Metro and parking at that end, I completely agree. I mean, but uh, I don't know how we fix that. And I'm open to any ideas, but I'm hearing that consistently when I'm talking to folks out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. But did anyone else want to uh, chime in before we move on? Ms. Olam. Yes, this is Owen speaking. Um, yeah, I remember when the parking issue happened at Owen Front Way, and we, I do believe Mr. Town Manager gave you the authority of other neighborhoods in the future with the Metro. They just work it out with our town manager and they don't have to come to a public hearing. So I think that's, that's done. But uh, another issue, the construction vehicles being parked in neighborhoods. Prior to my getting on council, I believe I was on the BZA and I got um, given credit for that, which I said, no, the BZA doesn't legislate. <laughs> we uphold legislation. That was your town council. But you did have something uh, put on the book so that you didn't have a lot of these working vehicles in neighborhoods and people had to park them either in a garage or in the back of their home and so forth. And I have noticed that we are not enforcing that like we used to. So I think that's already on the books unless we turned around and took that off the books. Just to comment on the construction type vehicles. Okay, thank you. Um, so who would like to go next for a round table? Ms. Baker. Council Member Baker. So I just want to weigh in kind of on a variation of the second part of Pradeep's comments, um, specific to public hearings and us meeting in person again. I know this is brought up before. I'm going to bring it up again that I do think, you know, lots of other jurisdictions in the state and certainly in other places are meeting in person. I think there is a safe way for us to meet in person. And I think what we've seen over the last 
six months or so that we've been doing this is that we don't get anywhere near the level of participation on these meetings that we do when we're in person. Um, and I, I just, I think it's a miss for our citizens. And we talk a lot about openness and transparency. And I think the virtual meetings are, are a miss on that. Um, certainly I recognize the, the health, uh, you know, challenges that we're facing and that we do need to be safe. And I'm certainly for, for our own health, for the health of our staff, for the health of our citizens. Um, so certainly think work sessions need to continue to be virtual for the foreseeable future. Um, but I do think given the space where we can hold a public hearing and even thinking back to that March public hearing that we did have to have in person where we were staggered. And of course, at this point, wearing masks and having citizens wear masks. Um, but I'd, I'd really like to see us on a path that we have that option to be in person again, um, because it just feels like there's no end in sight. And um, you know, Virginia is on phase three of opening. Um, I, I think we've all gotten really comfortable with this new situation, but it's not, it's not right. It's not fair to our citizens, and it it does um, it does feel like we at least need a plan or a path of when we're going to be in person again, at least for public hearings. Thank you. Um, who else would like to go um, for their roundtable? Who would like to go next? Pretty you've already gone. Is there someone who has another colleague who hasn't gone yet that would like to speak? Madam Mayor, I had a clarification on Ms. Baker's comment. Oh, okay. that I, go ahead. So uh, my request was not to go in person meeting. My request oh. was since, uh, you know, uh, obviously we will definitely think about that when the situation is better. Mm -hmm. my, my, my request or my ask here on discussion was um, you know, making this meeting more on social, you know, media, meaning live streaming the meetings rather than people just watching the recorded version or watching live on TV. How about using the social media? Because everybody follows social media these days, live streaming the meetings, whether now or in future when we do in-person meeting also, making those meetings live stream so people can actually watch, participate, engage, and we get uh, more feedback. So that was my 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 um, main um, ask here, but I appreciate uh, Council Member Baker's comment. Right. Well, I, I was just chiming in because I know you had mentioned meetings, so I, I was I, I recognize that our comments were different, um, but I was just chiming in on that. And certainly, they can live. We do live stream and have for years the public hearings. So you're really just referring to the work sessions being live streamed. Well, I think his suggestion is that like using Facebook Live and things like that, looking into the legal ramifications and and that sort of thing. But yeah. Um, yeah, and I do think that I know that the town manager has a, a weekly meeting, a phone meeting with all of the his counterparts across the region, and we have one also with the um, elected official, uh, the chairs, mayors and chairs, where we're all looking at data and trying to make the, the right decisions for that. And we're, it's It comes up almost every week how to look at the data and make sure that we're making a safe decision. So I agree with you with your comments completely. Um, is there, okay, who would like to go next for round table? Does he, Sydney? Or did you, okay. I can't keep track of who's gone because we've all talked, so keep me honest. <laughs> I just wanted to speak in support of uh, what Council Member Baker said. I've been um, nagging for a while and I kind of gave up, but I do feel strongly that um, public hearings are necessary for us to get um, more feedback from the citizens. Um, uh, as far as my roundtable uh, conversation is concerned, I, I just wanted to report to you that I sat in on a Council on Foreign Relations um, economic update uh, a, few, uh, a few days ago, and um, they had the chair of, or at least some official from NASBO, which is the National Association of, um, gosh, what is it, state budget officers, and they were talking about rainy day funds. I thought it was quite interesting. Um, he brought up several, um, uh, it was Sebastian Malaby, who's a writer, and Brian somebody, uh, Sigrets, I believe. Um, I thought there was a lot of really interesting information there, and they're gonna send us um, the, uh, the PowerPoint that he used, and I, I'm gonna forward it to you all, because um, he said some interesting things about rainy day funds specifically that, um, 
they weren't really very much in use and people went right through their rainy day funds during the last um, recession. Um, and uh, that, um, that was that was ideal and what the unfortunate thing he said that happened was that some towns that had really good rainy day funds didn't use them because they were under the impression that um it it was uh, a position of power to have all that money in the bank and they didn't want uh, citizens to think that they were um raising taxes for their for their uh rainy day funds so there's some interesting information that i'll share with you all um but uh, I think the takeaway that uh, they were proposing was to use it. Don't don't just keep holding on to it, even though you need it, because what he said was over the past 10 years, you know, we built up our rainy day funds again and now we need them. Now we should use them. And then when this is over, we'll build them up again. So I thought that was very interesting information. That's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Look forward to seeing that. Um, Who would like to go next? Uh, Sheila. Sheila Olam here with Miss Cleo in case she gets up so you'll know who's with me. A um, couple of things. Get ready. Fall cleanup is the 21st through the 23rd on your trash day. So that's only a couple of weeks away. Thank you, MC. She's right here. Uh, thank you for putting that back together, DPW, and um, I'm glad we're feeling safe enough and our staff is out there uh, taking care of business. Also, I attended the Hispanic Business Reception, which I've been going to since before I was on council, and the former chair of the chamber was the keynote speaker, Mr. Danny Vargas, and it was he just put on the best speech. If anyone wants a copy, I'll be glad to share it with you. The U.S. Congress finally voted yes on a Hispanic museum down, down in D.C. And they've been trying to get one for years. As long as I've known Danny, he's been working on this. So now they're after all the senators. So if you know senators in any other state, you don't need to call ours. Warner and Kate are right <laughs> on it. But that would really be a great addition to have right here. Easy for the people in Herndon to go down to because there, there have been contributions to the US for over 600 years. So he really gave a great history. And if you want a copy, I'll be glad to forward it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, who would like to go next? We've got Mr. McKenna and Mr. Delagula. Mr. Delagula. Thank you, Madam Mayor, it's Councilmember Delagula. I guess the question for either the town manager or whoever this is appropriate for, I got a couple questions regarding, we recently um, previously allowed um, some of the businesses to hold off on paying the town the previously collected meals taxes. Uh, the question is, how are we doing relative to what should have been paid uh, and we actually what we actually got paid, and I guess include, uh, you know, everything else in that. You know, as far as revenues potentially due to the town, uh, is that something that we can uh, easily find or audit? Uh, this is Bill Ashton, town manager. Absolutely, uh, we can get you a report on that. Um, I will talk to Jenny about maybe having it in to go out in my dispatch this week, or if not, we can talk about it at the council meeting next week. Um, just to clarify the point, though, even though uh, you have restaurants that may not be remitting the meals taxes in order to get that um, that that sort of um, benefit, they still have to report. So we have to see the reports. We are keeping track of all of that. We are considering those as counts receivable right now, and we will go back and, and get that money to a later date. Um, but we will get you a full full picture of what that looks like. Thank you, and that that absolutely will help as we kind of close towards the uh, the crunch time and when uh, the full impact of this thing is going to be felt. So, want to know what's in the uh, what's in the cupboard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McKenna, did you have anything for us? Nope. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Town Manager, do you have further comments for us this evening? Uh, nothing more this night, this night, Madam Mayor. Okay. 
Uh, so guys, we do have a need to go into a closed meeting tonight. So I'm looking for a motion to go into closed meeting as provided under section 2.2 37113A3 of the Code of Virginia to consider the disposition of publicly held real estate in the downtown where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining portion or negotiation strategy of the public body. Is there a motion? So Mr. Mr. McKenna. This is Councilman McKenna. I motion make the motion. Baker, there... I'll second that. Okay, uh, we have a motion to approve made by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Ms. Baker. Is there discussion on this motion? Okay, seeing none, um, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Olam. Olam, yes. Baker. Baker, yes. Delagula. Delagula, yes. DeCall. DeCall votes yes. Friedrichs. Friedrichs, yes. McKenna. McKenna, yes. Merkel. Merkel is yes. So that vote uh, carries 7 0 and it is 7 46. Um, we will take a very brief recess uh, to give IT a, a chance to uh, make the adjustments that they need to make. Um, and I'll ask council members to mute your mics until uh, we advise that the closed meeting has begun. Thank you very much.